Good morning, family. Beautiful day, isn't it? Yeah, I can't wait to get home and throw a couple of steaks on the barbecue grill. I'm just looking forward to that. In our first reading, whenever I read, read that, a question comes to my mind. And the question that comes to my mind is, if Adam and Eve, while they were in the garden there, instead of saying, playing the blame game, if they would have said, Lord, we messed up. We disobeyed you. We did in fact eat from the tree of knowledge and we're sorry. I often wonder if they would have come across like that, if God would not have given them such a severe penalty by throwing them out of the garden. I'm sure they would have had to pay for that sin in some way, but maybe, maybe it wouldn't have been so severe. Severe enough to where it touches all of us because that was the beginning of original sin. That sin that we take care of when we're baptized. But they played the blame game. God calls Adam and Adam's in hiding. And the reason he was hiding is I got to tell you this story, second grade, right? Benedictine sisters, St. Mary of Sell and Berwin, that's where I went. And they said, you know, when God called Adam, he was still eating the, the apple. Back then, that was what it was, you know, like, to help the story goes. And he said, when he heard God, that apple got lodged in his throat. And that's why if you look at a man, he has that little extra there because that's the Adam's apple. Thank you, sister. But you know what? It helped us remember the story, though. Those sisters were pretty wise. So maybe they didn't, they, they exaggerated just a little bit. But I'll tell you what, I'll always remember Adam's apple and I'll always remember original sin because of that story. But the blame game still goes on today. I remember as a young salesman, I had a sales manager, and if we didn't meet, meet our, if I didn't meet my figures, or if I screwed something up, I would go in and I'd say, well, this is the reason, you know. I ran out of time. I didn't do this. I did, I, I always was, it was always an excuse. And one day he looked at me and he said, you know what, just once, just once, I would like for a salesman to come in and say, you know what, I messed up. It's my fault, it's on me. I guarantee it'll never happen again. Just once. But we still play that blame game today. And in my opinion, that's one of the reasons that the United States is no longer a land of opportunity, but it is a land of entitlement, which is really a shame. It's never our fault. You know, I got that bad grade in philosophy because the teacher didn't like me. The professor didn't care for me. The professor didn't agree with my ideas. It's always somebody's fault. I didn't clean my room because, you know, my sister distracted me. Blame game, blame game, blame game. And the interesting thing is, going back to my original question, I really believe that, that God would have had mercy on Adam and Eve if they would have just owned up to what they did. But that's still true today. That's still true today. We still hide. I talk to people all the time in the hospital and they're saying, well, I haven't gone to confession for 15 years, 18 years, 20 years. Well, why? Well, I can confess my sins just to God, just between me and God, that's, that's good enough. And while I can't say it because I'm employed at the hospital and I still need my paycheck at the end of the week, I want to say that's a cop-out. That is just a cop-out. The reason you, didn't go to, you don't go to confession for the last 15 years is because you don't want to own up to those sins and say, yes, I did this, yes, I am guilty. So you hide from God by not going to the confession and just having that 
relationship. And the relationship's good, but it lacks a couple of things. First of all, it lacks the grace of the sacrament. And as Catholics, that's what we're about. We're a sacramental church. And any time that we can receive grace from any of the sacraments, we should be filled with joy. So it's a cop-out. Don't hide behind that. Stop pointing and playing the blame game. I see that in marriages, you know? Was it my fault? Was it my fault? He did that or she did that. No, own up to it. Own up to it. Take responsibility. And that's one of the greatest things that as parents that we can do for our kids. It's teach them to take responsibility. I spent some time ministering in Cook County in their prison system. I wasn't actually in the jail. I was at, uh, at that time they had a boot camp and convicted felons would go to this boot camp and I worked at boot camp. And one of the things that was a constant in talking to these, these prisoners was, well, I didn't want to do it, but it was peer pressure. I didn't want to do it, but if I didn't do it, I would have been in trouble with the gang. But I didn't want to do it, but, 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 but. By the time they got out of boot camp, because at boot, in this boot camp that they did, they would strip, it was kind of, if you've been in a service, you know, when you're in boot camp, they strip you down to nothing, and then they rebuild you as a soldier. Well, in this boot camp, they strip them down to nothing. When you first get into that boot camp, you're not allowed to sit down. You stand. You earn your privilege to sit. So those first couple days, you stand and you eat. You stand all the time until bedtime, and then you're given permission to lay down in your rack. The common thread, the other common thread was when these guys got out of boot camp, one of the things they did and they realized was I had to take responsibility for what I did. And that changed their lives. They changed their lives. So, my challenge for you this week is go to confession. Go to confession, even if you haven't been there for 20 years. I'll tell you, talk to a priest sometime. The greatest joy that they have in a confessional is when they hear, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been 18 to 20 years since my last confession. They are overjoyed. And more so than the priest, but the priest in persona Christi, in Christ, is overjoyed. Jesus is overjoyed. And he's saying, welcome back. And he wants to give you a big hug. So stop hiding behind those sins. Take responsibility. And a good start toward that is to make a good confession. So go to confession. That is my challenge for you today. To go to confession sometime in the next week or two. God bless you.